say, um, just like you have a preponderance of youth in agriculture, you also have them in the creative arts. And what kind of side <laughs> yes. is uh, uh, a music artist, a producer, I understand. And um, let's connect with you. Great to have you join us this fine morning's extended version of International Women's Day. We we'll probably have this one in time on thereafter to be talking about what we want to happen with women in this country. Uh, what does it mean for you as a young woman on this International Women's Day extended version we're talking about? What does it mean to you? Um, uh, thank you for the compliment. I don't know if I'm so young, but you know, um, sorry, I think there's a, the sound is gone. The sound is gone. Hello, hi. Hello. Okay, so National Women's Day, I think. National Women's Day, I think. It's a, it's a day to, obviously, of remembrance of women, of putting women center stage, um, because women do a lot um, without, like, you know, I think the lady that came, the two ladies that have spoken before me have said most of the stuff already. Um, they've been both very brilliant um, talkers, so there's not much ground to really cover at the moment. But for me, I think being a woman, a mom, um, it means so many things. Um, and um, I think I'm especially glad that I'm in Africa at this particular time, um, because obviously I spend a lot of my time, my life abroad. So. Um, and being in a woman in Africa is completely different to being a woman in, um, in the UK, for instance. So I think, um, you know, National Women's Day here for me is an opportunity, like they have mentioned, about bringing forward problems of inequalities, for instance, in different sectors and, um, and women not being appreciated enough in their various sectors and for their efforts. Um, so, um, you know, so, but, and then obviously also a big celebration and praise for all those people that are doing incredible jobs and, um, and um, basically just doing the work and not really there for the show. Um, I think that's the key. Um, because I think that's what m women mostly do. They're there um, and do the work and not for the show. I think um, what came to mind has been the NSARS incidents and protests that happened was obviously very distressing to watch. And at the same time, um, it was extremely encouraging to see a lot of young women come out and make a stand and find their voice. I felt extremely proud um, and sad at the same time because when you see the people's lives that were affected and some people's lives were destroyed, um, you know, when you hear of the innocent protesters that were obviously shot and injured um, just because they were trying to make an innocent change, um, by obviously hooligans and, and you know and you understand the deep divide and the need to fix the psychology of the country um, because I think that's where most of it is trying to fix the psychology the, the mental state how people think how they see them so um, I think that has been the biggest highlight for me this this year so far on top of the obviously um, COVID that we've had to deal with as well, and um, and you know I've been so grateful that you know whereas originally everyone thought Nigeria, Africa especially was going to be in a very massive bad situation, but so far so good. We've been we've done a lot better than we could have hoped or imagined. I think. And it's still very sad for obviously the people that have been lost in the meantime as well. So I think all in all, <coughs> even in the midst of the pandemic, there has been good. So I'm someone that understands that, right, right. Understands that in every situation, yeah, there's... Excellent. And, 
and the, together with the with, with the NSAS protests and, and you know, rallies that happened last year, the, the COVID-19 still stays with us. It have, began from last year into this year, and a, a, a number of people have told me how the entire uh, pandemic has affected the creative arts. I mean, you don't have shows, um, you've had production suspended, it goes on and on. Less is going to several billions of naira. You, uh, you uh, are a stakeholder in the creative arts industry. Tell us how it's affected you. Um, you know, I personally, I'm not going to lie. I'm not, I don't think I'm necessarily the strongest voice um, at the moment for this here yeah, because I'm just coming into this industry here yeah. and because I, I like I said my music has been focused on online and is only now I'm beginning to find my voice here yeah. and so far I can't complain um, because whatever I've put in is coming back in multifold so well, I think generally for the main artist that has already been in the industry and have struggled to you know build a framework of shows and you know survival whatever they need you know because you need to do a certain amount of work to survive just like any other career um, obviously they've been hit very badly even though a lot of them have not been able to express it um, because I believe that you know social distancing no shows um, the, the, you know, one of the main industry that have suffered the most is obviously the artists. So, and we are in a country where instead of the government sometimes to also be taking that into consideration, they're only thinking, you know, I heard somewhere someone announcing that they wanted to start taxing art artists for on social media <laughs> during this period, just like they increased the price of um, of energy why people are going through a down time which doesn't make sense um, so you know we have to change fix the psychology of the people here for the country to work um, and it comes from the very top and I think that's the main thing that needs to happen in Nigeria it's not just about the physical it's the yes, mental it's state the as we celebrate the meet of COVID-19 and we're making excuses for instance they have to obey all the uh, North of our physical procedures to uh, stay away from contracting COVID-19 however first life seems to be coming back but some people will say no excuses <laughs> okay, for you for a woman to get where you have to be there must be a way where there is no way what are those ways you think women can navigate through to get to the promised land of the midst of all that we have happening around us um, I think women just naturally um, have it in them to, like, you know, the other lady said, multitask um, is a skill that we're brought up with anyway. So, and then it's, it's a mindset, you know, because um, I, when I say mindset, it's, it's not, you know, I always tell people the trick is not to focus on the money. Um, you know, the, the trick is to focus on achieving something special like you know I want to have the best songs or I want to have this or you know set goals um, and um, which is not always necessarily about money but you know I know it's difficult here to do that because um, you know we all have to survive and stuff like that but I think if you can do it in such a way that even if you at least have a certain um, you know work out how you can survive at the same time but let it not be all about survival <laughs> let it be like she said about passion and um, just have a mindset of not losing you know the, you, you can't lose when you don't accept loss so if, if you fall down like she said you get up again and you continue you learn the lesson and once you have that attitude you're unbeatable really because um, you don't know how to quit and how to give up on only if you choose to because everything is a choice so um, I think that once you have a particular mindset that takes you a long way and um, and then I also want to encourage women to understand that they're a lot stronger than they are you know you're a lot smarter than you've been led to believe you are you you know you're so, you're so much more and you can do so much more and and so and um, you know and I think another thing that is very important is you know especially from home when you have a little girl is is 
what you're feeding in the home to the girls as well how you encourage them, how you motivate them, you know, the kind of discussions you have with them. Everything is molding the child. So I think, you know, we all have to work together is the message from the home to the schools to the government to everybody. We're all in it together and we need to basically make it happen together. That's the only way it's going to work out. The only way it's going to work out. Thank you, Mr. Shai, musician <laughs> and entertainer. Call us from Studios. Thank you so much for your time and for this morning. Thank you.